Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the Expert to Authority show. Uh, my name is Simone Vincenzi. I'm your host, and I cannot wait to introduce you to the special guest that we have today because we are going to talk about mastering your daily habits and accomplishing what is that you want to accomplish in life. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of the episodes. If you is the first time that you're joining the show, welcome. This is the show for coaches, speakers, trainers, consultants who want to grow their businesses while making an impact in the world. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And also, if you scroll down in the show notes, there is a particular resource that I want you to download, which is our webinar conversion kit. Uh, you know, a webinar are an incredible way to attract clients over and over again. And uh, we are specialists in running high converting webinars that give you clients consistently. I've run myself more than a thousand webinars so far, and I've made all the mistakes I've created an incredible process that will make your life much simpler and easier uh, to connect all the different pieces of the puzzle, the webinar puzzle. So make sure you check it out and you can either scroll down or you can visit a uh, webinarconversionkit.com. So it's webinarconversionkit.com. As you can see here is, uh, if you've been following me for a while, this is not the usual background. I'm in the south of France right now at the moment, uh, close to Montpellier in a place called Arles, which I've just learned how to pronounce because I couldn't do that before. I was like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, and uh, uh, so this is a bit of a change of scenario. I'm here because my wife is running an event and uh, one of the perks of being a husband of uh, uh, a speaker said when she gets hired to deliver conferences, then I get to follow and also enjoy uh, the beautiful places. So make sure you check out on social media some of the behind the scene of this uh, of uh, of all. Now it is time to introduce uh, our guest today. He's a coach who helps men double their productivity without burning out while having more time off. Please sign me up. Uh, besides working with startup founders and senior executives, he also teaches uh, interpersonal dynamics at the Stanford Graduate School of Business and runs mastermind groups for men. Um, is also a habit and performance expert. So without further ado, can please give a massive welcome to Johan Larkin. Johan, how are you doing today? It's actually Jonah Simone. Jo uh, Jonah, Jonah. I I know it's Jonah. I don't know why I said Johan, but I know it's Jonah. Jonah no, Lark. It's, it's because you're European, and uh, you know I lived in I lived in the Netherlands when I was in in high school, and uh, they called me Johan because Johan is a is a, like a Dutch, very common Dutch name, and so literally more than half the time they called me Johan. So don't feel bad at all. Uh, well, great. this is, a, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for everyone who's watching or listening, this is a great moment of the guest saving the host from a, <laughs> <laughs> this is a great moment because I was just getting ready here to dig my little hole and say, okay, that's a great start of an interview, knowing, I uh, know your name. <laughs> so Jonah, <laughs> now we, we are here. Uh, t tell us a bit more. How did you start uh, uh, in your field? What what made you so passionate about exploring the topic of success, in particular of achievement and habits? It it came out of uh, you know a, a long process, but essentially I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. Uh, I used to sell uh, pencils to my classmates when I was in in fourth grade, and uh, would 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 make money doing that. Um, and uh, as I sort of grew in business, eventually I founded a very successful company and we, uh, my business partner and I had a, had a successful exit. I was completely burned out and I didn't even realize how burned out I was, but it hmm. was, it was, it was to the point where um, I, I was depressed and I, and I, and I wasn't even really aware of it. Um, luckily I was able to take some time off and I took two years off and traveled around the world and I was in China and I got inspired by acupuncture. Um, 
I saw how beautiful and effective it could be in, in healing. And there was something inside of me that knew that I wanted to be healed too. And so I became an acupuncturist and I did that for about eight years. And I was working with um, mostly people in the tech world and they would come in and just talk to me about the same things every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed out. I drink coffee in the morning and I drink alcohol at night. And can you fix me? <laughs> and, uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah. And, and then, and then and what was your answer then? Because uh, you just you said that you came back from that moment. So what was your answer when uh, people started asking you for help? Yeah, it's a it's a good question, and and I always I always turned or, turned it around to people. Like, what is it that you think I'm going to fix? Um, you know, and some sometimes sometimes it's like very direct. Like, oh, I have back pain, and I would say to people, look, I can help you, but I can't fix you. Hmm. Um, I'm happy to do the best I possibly can, but you're responsible ultimately for your own healing. And honestly, healing can be a mystery. There's no direct step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Now I can tell you what's worked for me. I can tell you what I've seen other people do. But you have your own unique healing journey, and you have to be willing to go on that. So, what was the um, what was the first step for you in uh, in in your healing journey? Because you said that uh, you had ex certain experiences, and uh, I, I want to focus still now at the moment of the recovering from the burnout part. Mm -hmm. What was that you experienced or you did that? Uh, was your aha moment when you said, oh my God, I wish I knew this before? Was that a specific episode that you have in mind? That's a great question. Um, I actually think it didn't happen until years later, that aha moment, um, because what I, what I started doing was I just started surfing. I had always, I had been a surfer my whole life, but I had neglected it when I was in business. And I had gone from surfing, you know, almost every day to hardly ever surfing. So I started surfing again and that got me back in the water and surfing got me traveling again and got me started to get me inspired again. And it actually wasn't until I, I, I was actually in. OK, so here's the moment. It was a couple of years later. I was in uh, in Chile in the Atacama Desert in the middle of nowhere with a friend of mine and we were camping in front of this this wave and i realized that i had basically achieved a dream that i'd always had and that dream mm -hmm. was to find my own special wave in the middle of nowhere with just me and a buddy and at that point i realized holy crap what has kept me from pursuing this dream for so mm -hmm. long what is it and i realized that i had been depressed and i was stuck in what I call what's possible thinking instead of what's actually do I want thinking, what's extraordinary thinking. And so that was that moment sitting there in the middle of the desert. It sounds like an incredible moment. And uh, I'm reflecting on a couple of things here. Number one is uh, definitely there is a parallel. I think that uh, for everyone, uh, not everyone, there's a generalization. A lot of people in business uh, that they are very driven and they have a goal, like a business goal. It can absorb your entire life. I have a strong passion for basketball. And uh, I started I my business. Too, man. I love it. The, oh, we got to play. We got to play. I, I, I get it. I'm, um, I live for basketball. It's a You're big passion of mine. better than me, but I still love it. So, yeah. Um, I, I now play in the, in the third division in the National League here in the UK, even if, I'm pre even if I'm pretty short. Uh, but I, I, started, I started at 28. So I'm 33 now, and I started at 28. From 18 to 28, it was just working. And then as soon as the business arrived to a certain point where I was... Uh, able to take more time, which was an entirely mental thing. I would have taken time before, but before I didn't have that time to dedicate to basketball that was so important for me. Mm -hmm. 
then um, so I can uh, I started playing and started dedicating time and actually was a bit of difference. My business grew more when I was playing basketball than when I wasn't. And we can definitely go into into that uh, and to what I believe uh, that. I, I'm actually let's let's explore this. Uh, no, uh, let, let me um, let's. Ex- I want to give you a recommendation or a question. Um, have you ever read a book called of Ser- Sergio Bambaren called The Dolphin? No. All right, I'll send it to you Did because I? it's the story. It's the story of a dolphin. It's like a, a children's story, but uh, incredibly powerful. It's kind of like the. Um, uh, is one of these books that are for children, but adults, they are transformational. And it's the story of a dolphin chasing the perfect wave. I'm oh. sure you will love it. I'm I, sure you I will love it. I'll send, it. That sounds amazing. I'll, I'll send you the link. But going back to my question, is that why do you think that happened that uh, my business started growing more when I started playing basketball and taking time for that? So I would turn it around. You love basketball, right? I do, 100%. You love it. It lights you. I can tell just by the way you talk about it. It lights you up inside. And when you're passionate about one thing, which is basketball, it naturally bleeds over into everything else. You wake up on the right side of the bed. You feel good. You walk into work. Hey, you're greeting everybody. You feel good. It's like you're having a good time. All of that stuff. And um, so that's why I think your business got even better after you started doing something that you absolutely loved. How close uh, was I? I was very close. I was very close, which now I want to ask you the question. How did your life turn around when you found that wave or when you had that realization? Well, I think the first thing was that I realized that experientially, I had achieved a dream that I'd always had. And there's a difference between thinking about something and actually getting to experience it. And so that taught me that the imagination can be extremely powerful and that if you really use the imagination how it can be used, then you can use it to create things that one might think are not possible. And that was really what I learned is that, wow, I didn't, there was a part of me that didn't think it was possible to achieve that dream and yet I achieved it. And so what was next? And that's kind of what I felt like I learned doing that. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to save a question. So save it for later, which uh, I, I want to know as well, what happened next? Uh, that you have created. But before we go there, I'm curious about the, how do we, about creating habits? Because a big part of success, and I think that anyone with a a lot of people that are listening or watching our show, they are already well into their personal development journey. And they understand incredibly well the power of habits and how they, um, they create our lives. But still, but still, instilling those habits and changing habits, for many, is hard. <laughs> and I'm putting my hand up. It's hard. <laughs> right, you, you're putting your hand up too. But I, I know you have a, a philosophy around that concept. So how do we uh, create powerful habits and make, in particular making sure that actually we stick to them after the first week? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Everybody struggles with habits. I struggle with habits. You know... Like you said, a lot of your listeners are already probably very successful already, which means that they probably do a lot of habits uh, consistently that create that success. So let's just start with that. Now, most of the time what happens is, is people, when they have successful habits, they're doing them unconsciously. And by definition, a habit is unconscious. But when you're trying to change a habit, either add a habit or subtract a habit, that's when it becomes difficult because you run up against your environment, your subconscious mind, and all the things that get you into trouble. So the first thing that um, you know most people do when they 
start thinking about a new habit is they keep it aspirational instead of practical. So saying, oh, I'd really like to lose 15 pounds is much different than saying, all right, my goal is to lose 15 pounds, right? Um, so that's the first thing. You actually have to decide what it is that you want to do. Number one, decide. What do you want to do? You want to run a marathon? Okay, great. I want to run a marathon. Now, say you want to run a marathon. The second step is you need to chunk down that behavior into the smallest possible thing that you could do. And I say you should be able to do it in less than a minute because what we're going for is for the brain to set up automaticity. Um, so if you want to work out, if you want to go for a run, I would recommend putting on your workout clothes and have that be your win. Hmm. That would be step two, chunk it down. So if you want to meditate, commit to meditating for three breaths. Uh, if you want to do breath work, commit to doing one breath because what you're doing is you're programming it into your subconscious. So that's step two, chunk it down. Step three, you want to stack it on top of a previous behavior. So I meditate after I drink my water. I get up in the morning, I drink my water, then I go meditate. After I meditate, I do my breath work. If I don't drink my water, then it throws off my whole day because I know that like after water hmm. comes meditation. After meditation comes breath work. So put it on top of something you're already doing. Um, you want to eat your vitamins, you know, when you sit down for dinner, then I take my vitamins, whatever it is, always stack it. So that's step three. Step four is get an accountability partner. I call them an accountability buddy because you're 95% more likely to do something if you're doing it with somebody else. You play basketball mm -hmm. and how much more fun is basketball when you're playing with another person versus when you're I... just going out. And I need, I need to, yourself. yeah, it's, it's completely, it's completely different. I need to feel that energy going out there. And in fact, I remember even in, uh, during, during lockdown, you know, even if I was practicing basketball, I wasn't enjoying it as much. Like I was practicing because I had a goal, but I, I know it was a conscious effort to get ready to go to the my nearest court when uh, things were opening up and then we could go out. And then, uh, and I was on my own most of the time and then practicing. So even what I was getting better, I wasn't enjoying it as much. So I think that becomes way more enjoyable when you're doing it with others that are part of your journey as well. hundred, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, you know, for me, I like to go surfing. I'll surf alone for sure, but I'd always much rather go with somebody else, hands down. So you want to do it with another person. That's step four. Step five, and this is the biggest thing that people get wrong. It's called celebration. So we think, oh, I did the habit, pat myself on the back, I did a good job. Mm -hmm. But you also want to celebrate when you don't do the habit. Okay, um, why is most that? People, That's yeah, a bit counterintuitive. Well, most people, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's totally counterintuitive because most of the time people think, oh, you know, I need more willpower to do a habit or I just should have done it and I didn't do it. So now there's something wrong with me and I need to improve, yada, yada, yada. Okay. The reason why that's wrong to do it like that is because your brain, uh, because you have a primate brain that's oriented towards pleasure and moves away from pain. If you go and you start to blame yourself, you'll actually create pain around trying to create this new habit and the likelihood of you trying to do the habit again actually decreases. So if instead you celebrate, you know, put your arms up in the air and realize, wow, I just realized I didn't meditate today, but I'm giving mm -hmm. myself credit for realizing that, then you're much more likely in the morning when you get up the next day to focus on it because it actually feels good to you instead of saying, oh, I'm such a bad habit person because I said I was going to meditate and I didn't meditate and I can't trust myself and blah, 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 blah. I might as well just give up. No, celebrate the fact that you recognize that you didn't and you're much more likely to turn towards it again. Be why? Why does this happen? Well, let's look at neurotransmitters because when you celebrate, when you put your arms up in the air, what happens? Dopamine, serotonin, 
you get those pleasurable reward neurotransmitters in your brain. And again, you're much more likely to go and do the habit. So again, five so, steps, what, decide what, what you want to do. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was, I was saying uh, before we do the, the wrap up, the, the recap of, of the five steps. So you're also talking like physically in terms of celebrations. I saw you, I saw you mentioning putting like your arms up in, in celebration. So also the physical element matters on how we celebrate. Well, it helps, right? You can you could be in meditation, and go, oh, I did great. I met I I or you know I I forgot to meditate or I did meditate. But if you physically put yourself in a position like raising your arms up, something like that, you know that position. There's a reason why people do that when they win something. It's because mm. it triggers specific neurochemistry in your brain, and so you can use that. You can use the body to specific to trigger specific neuro neurological responses in your brain. So if you can do it, why not use it? I love it. I love it. Let's go with the with the recap of the five. Yeah, yeah. So decide what you want to do. Whether you want to, you know, earn a million dollars, find a relationship, whatever it is. Decide. Chunk down a behavior into something you can do, even if you're late for work, right? You got to hop on a Zoom call. You can still sit down on your meditation cushion and take a breath. Um, three, you want to stack it on top of a previously existing behavior. Four, you want to do it with another person. And five, celebrate no matter what. Uh, I love these five steps and uh, I'm, I'm going definitely to adjust the celebration part because uh, I only celebrate when I do it or when I achieve it or when I, uh, even if I've trained myself on chunking things down in terms of, okay, can I just do one breath? Okay. I've done my, my part. So I've trained myself to do that, but not to celebrate when I'm acknowledging or recognizing that I missed it. So I'm definitely going to add that. And I, uh, I believe it's going to make a difference. I believe I can, can see, I can understand why that's going to make a difference. Um, what uh, I think gets many people confused though, um, is uh, the connection between your habits and your vision, because your vision is something that you have an idea, but you can't really control your habit. You can't control. You have a certain degree of control, but your vision, no. And I think that sometimes there is uh, this uh, disconnect between your vision and the habits that you built. Either because everyone tells you these are the habits that you need to follow every morning, you know, you need to wake up and do this. And so you end up building habits that they don't really matter to you. <laughs> or because uh, sometimes yeah. you just didn't even think about it. So in your, in your view of the world, in the world that you do, how do you connect your vision and the habits and making sure that they actually always align to each other? That's a really really good question um because i don't think there's like an across the board answer for everybody um but i just can tell you what i've noticed working with people over the years and that is um you know two things <clears throat> the first thing is that you actually have to like to do the habit in order to continue it so if you like to if you drink coffee in the morning you like that habit, right? You actually have I'm to Italian, have to I really do. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you enjoy the process. You go, you you know, everything about it, the smell, the flavor, all that stuff, right? Um so if you are if you find yourself doing stuff that you don't actually want to do, then you really need to question what's going on. Now look, that's not to say that like you're training for basketball and you know, you're working on your three pointer, like it might be frustrating. Sometimes you might not enjoy that particular moment. But overall, you come home, you tell your wife, you know, I drained 10 out of 10 three pointers in practice today. That's good. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always really, really important to align what it is that you want with what you're doing, because a goal 
you know, people think, oh, when I achieve X, Y, Z, then I'm going to be happy or whatever. And, 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 you know, luckily the narrative on that has changed. And a lot of, of us realize, oh, that's not the case. But what a goal does, a goal tells you who to be right here, right now, who to be today. So if I want to create monetary wealth for myself in the future, like, I have to ask myself, how would a wealthy person treat money? You know, would they like have their bills all over the place and let them be unpaid and like not have their money organized? Probably not. They'd probably be fairly organized with their money. So even if I have $100 in the bank, let me be organized with that. So again, the goal tells you who to be today, right here, right now. And you want to actually have some enjoyment in that. If you're not enjoying it, I always say you're doing the wrong thing. Like if we're not here to have fun and be creative and enjoy ourselves and do good work in the world and bring our best, what mm. the hell are we doing anyway? What are we doing? Working so that you can like retire someday? That sounds horrible. <laughs> it uh, it does sound horrible and what is it, though the balance between because i know you, you you also do work with the top performance high achievers uh, um, and extremely successful people in their field and yeah. there is this concept about also you know going the extra mile do what uh, others are not willing to do and in order to reach a certain level of success, uh, whether you are an athlete, whether you are in business, you know, you eat quite a lot of frogs. You're doing things that you don't uh, naturally enjoy for the future reward. So what's the balance between yeah. uh, not creating a nightmare for yourself throughout the process uh, while you're building that vision, but still also doing the things that are necessary for you to be the top of your field? Yeah. Yeah, that's another really good question. Um, and I mean, we should talk about it because I certainly don't have a monopoly on this. I mean, I think number one, you kind of have to enjoy the process of stepping into the bleeding edge and seeing uh, how far you can stretch or how far you can bend without breaking. Would you mm -hmm. agree with that? I mean, you actually I have do. to enjoy some of that painful process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. I, so I think I totally agree. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, a lot of high performers are driven by, uh, you know, by, uh, by trauma, to be totally honest. And when you start to work through that trauma, they realize, wow, that thing that I really thought I wanted is actually not what I thought I wanted. Um, to be to get a to really get a really uh, insightful viewpoint into this, I recommend reading Will Smith's book. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. The I mean, he's obviously besides the slap in the Academy Awards, one of the most successful actors ever. Yeah, and very intentional. But if you read his book, you'll realize the reason why he was driven to be so successful, and it comes from trauma. And so once you start to realize these things, even if you're a high performer, maybe you, you change what, what you want to do. But, you know, ultimately, I think about it like basketball. Um, you know, the best basketball teams, like you watch the Golden State Warriors, you watch them play, you watch them move the ball. They're playing for the sheer joy of the game. Yes. And that, I believe, is where you actually get to the absolute highest level is the calling is beyond any goal. It becomes pleasurable just to do the thing in the moment. So when you're talking about going the extra mile or doing things that other people aren't willing to do, ultimately there has to be some sense that something greater is at work and that you're willing to dedicate the thing that is most valuable to you and that is your attention to this particular pursuit mm. and that something good is going to come of it and that you love that process you just enjoy the process of even being stressed out and anxious sometimes because you know we all get there i mean i've been the last month i've been more stressed than i have been in years and it's been like kind of eye-opening for me like holy crap 
it can happen to me too. So mm -hmm. it's humbling, but I, I do believe that one has to be dedicated to their craft as a pursuit. Yeah. Um, I like the example that you made about the Golden State Warriors and also about Will Smith. Because uh, I've been uh, I've been d diving deeper in, in in these topics myself, uh, maybe for curiosity to understand myself better, and uh, I can consider myself uh, a high performer. You know, I I always got what I wanted in life. It's not one thing that I wasn't mm -hmm. able to achieve that I wanted to have or to achieve. But at the same time, also it came from trauma, from the I had my fair share of shit in life that happened when I was a child between my parents and so on. And so everything was for me an escape. And, uh, and uh, I was reading something. I think there is an interview with, um, he was an ex NFL player, Terry crew, I think. Um, Terry Cruz, yeah. Mm -hmm. Terry Cruz. He actually yep. did a release this book and it was talking about the difference between a high performer where you are slave and you're escaping from something or when you are free and uh, you are dedicating yourself the pleasure and the joy of everything and not being a reaction from something that happened when you were five years old and you needed to prove something. And I find I connected a lot with the topic, which uh, also the conversation that we're having now and what you just mentioned is a reconfirmation of that is that freedom that you get when you are now consciously pursuing something because you want to, not because you have to, going back to what you mentioned at the beginning. Um, Jonah, this has been an incredible interview and uh, I love all the topics talking about the vision, the habits, uh, um, you know, and also this final part about where does success come from? What does this drive come from? And how can we actually enjoy the process of this? I know definitely there are going to be many people that will want to explore your work further. Um, I know you have a seven day challenge as well. So how can people get in touch with you and find out more about you? Yeah, thanks, Simone. Yeah, great conversation. I feel like we could yak yak along for uh, another couple hours over coffee and, and uh, just learn so much from each other. But um, people can go to web my website. They're welcome to uh, go there. JonahLarkin.com. That's J-O-N-A-H-L-A-R-K-I-N.com. And uh, you can sign up for, uh, I have a free seven day habit challenge on there. And uh, it's very simple. It's, it's uh, seven days of emails and some videos. And it just basically walks you through the process of creating a new habit. So I recommend you go there. Um, you can sign up for it. You'll get those emails and you can start to actually see consciously how to create that new habit that you would like to start. And, um, and you can also uh, email me from there as well. I love talking to people. Uh, if you're interested in any of my coaching work, I work mostly with um, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, tech founders, people like that. I know I don't know how many there are listening to your show, but if you'd like to sign up for a free consult, you're always welcome to on my website. So ah, that, that's brilliant. That's and all the links, uh, all the links are in the show notes. So make sure you scroll down, check them out. There's going to be also the social media links to follow Jonah on social media and as well, the links on the website. I'm definitely going to sign up for the seven day challenge. I'm curious to go deeper into uh, your work, seeing something that I'm exploring at the moment. And that's my uh, my my phase of uh, um, of learning, so I'm definitely going to add that to my to my toolkit. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to register. Uh, Jonas, it's been incredible having you on the show. Thanks again. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Really, really great, great chatting, and uh, you know, basketball, baby. It's all about it's all, all about hoops. We got <laughs> we gotta we gotta play. We gotta play. Um, yeah, we gotta play. Well, this this is a private. This is a, this is a separate conversation from the show, but we definitely gotta play. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for for watching or listening. If you haven't subscribed yet, 
make sure you subscribe and i cannot wait to see you the next episode and uh, always remember that together we grow exponentially ciao